Hey guys, Kevin here. As you can see, I've got my PS4 loaded. Got my Wii U sitting down there as well that also allows me to play Wii games. Now, you know, PS4 is a modern console. Wii U is still relatively new. But I don't have any retro consoles here. And I do love the idea of playing old classic games in my living room. This is where I normally play games, if I'm honest. Play here with my friends and things like that. FIFA and, you know, golf and whatever. And, um... There are a lot of consoles that allow you to do that. Now, I do have a lot of the original consoles that I grew up with. I showed you that recently. I went up to my loft and I showed you the SNES, Mega Drive, Atari 2600, all, all those older consoles that I've got. They're still up there. But for me, as good as it is having those older consoles still there and older games, it just it isn't practical having them here because, for one, lack of space. For two, well... You know, those of you who grew up in my era will know that wireless joysticks and controllers wasn't a thing. And a lot of the controllers were actually, you know, the cable was actually quite short, so you had to sit quite close to the television, which doesn't really work in most people's uh, setup now. And one of the ways around that is to buy a clone console. There's a lot of them out there, and um, it does address a lot of the problems. Um, what these clone consoles will help you do is, for example, you'll set them there and they'll be able to play original NES cartridges or Mega Drive cartridges. There's a lot of them and what they'll do, they'll play NES, SNES, Mega Drive, Game Boy Advance and they play lots of different consoles all from the one machine. And there's lots of benefits to doing that because, for one, they can upscale to 720p. And they can do lots of other things too. For example, they can save your state, they can, you can enter cheap codes, you can load the game into memory and save it in an SD card and then just emulate the game and play it later rather than going and putting your cartridge in a lot of the time. They're not perfect though, that's the one thing. Seems like there's a lot of consoles uh, up to kind of like the SNES Mega Drive era. I was watching a, a video today and someone was saying that the, the patent for the Nintendo 64 actually kind of expired like a year ago, which means that we might actually start seeing Nintendo 64 clones. So that would be really good. But what I'd like to do just now is jump up to my computer and you know just show you some of the consoles that are around. We'll just browse through the web and I'll show you some of the clone consoles that are available at the moment and we'll talk about the good things and the bad things about those. So now I'm back at my PC and I'm on the funstockretro.co.uk website. It says here, Europe's number one retro gaming destination. It is a really good website. If you're a retro gamer, you will see most consoles that are for retro games being sold on here. There's obviously a lot of other consoles you don't see here. Ones that are sold on AliExpress and Gearbest. Other consoles maybe are only sold on uh, in North America and things like that. But this does stock most of the, the most popular retro gaming console so it's good to use it as an example um, now the home consoles area is where I'd probably focus on just now but you can see Smart Boy this is a, a little uh, device that I, I talked about the other day where you can plug in your uh, smartphone into like a Game Boy shell and play Game Boy games and play original Game Boy catches etc but as far as home consoles go there's, there's a few options but you know it there's not as many as you would think, you know, things like this, the Atari Flashback, they're just like emulation devices, same with these handheld, the Sega Ultimate, Atari Flashback, Sinclair ZX uh, Spectrum. Now, the Sega Wireless one, you know, a lot of the reviews are quite negative, they'll say it's just emulation, the emulation isn't great and things like that, but for £50, it's a fairly cheap way of playing Mega Drive games on your home con on your home setup. Um, they've got 80 built-in games, plus you can put in you can insert your original Mega Drive games. The, the important thing here though is that the, the controllers are actually wireless and that's quite key. As I said, you know, no one just sits right close to the computer anymore like that. You do need to, you know, stay close. But you can pl plug in the original Mega Drive um, controllers, which I'm sure uh, those of you who grew up with the system will know that you can actually plug in... Um, oh, what have I got? I've got files here. Replace. Copying files at the same time as recording it, multitasking. Um, yeah, you can plug in original controllers and there is that port there, this one here, you, that was the same port used in the Atari 2600 and other Atari consoles and with the Amiga and things like that. So they were interchangeable. Um, 
I've not played this one yet, but I, you know, there's a part of me tempted to just get it just because it's so cheap and it's got a lot of built-in games. But it, it's portable, so it's not going to take up a lot of room. Relatively cheap. And the games that are there, you can see there's a lot of classics. Sonic 1 and 2, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 3D Blast, we also have Golden Axe, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 3, Shinobi, Altered Beast, Columns. There's a lot of games there to keep you entertained. Um, there's a full list. So, you know, that's one of the consoles. I wouldn't say that's a, a true, well, it is a true retro clone console, but it is limited just the Mega Drive. Um, and there's a lot of other ones there. But what I want to show you is the home console area. So you can see some listed here. In fact, they've got the Sega one listed in this page as well. I didn't know that. Um, so these are the main ones listed here. And the Retron 5 is one that's... It's, this is probably one of the most popular over the last few years. It's certainly been reviewed a lot on YouTube and things like that. The Retron HD and the Retro Freak. That's a little bit newer. Now, the Retron HD... Without a doubt, they'll be capitalizing on the success of the Mini NES, etc. last year. It does work with original controls. They, they uh, give you some as well. The upscale is 720p, 3-foot HD cable, 6-foot USB charge cable for your controllers. Um, I don't know too much about that, but looks okay on the surface. Um, I guess, I mean, at that kind of price, you probably could pick up an original NES for that price, but you do get the um, like the emulation side of it. You can save your, the state of your game. Um, obviously, get a guarantee and things like that as well. But you can upscale it to 720p, which is something that you won't get. You can switch between 69 and the original 43 aspect ratio as well. And it's developed uh, by Hyperkin. Now, Hyperkin, they get kind of mixed reviews, which you will see. Now, the Retron 5. Now, this one... 150. In fact, I'll go down and show you the other one. Where are we? So it comes in white and grey. And I think if I was get, getting this, I don't think I will, but if I was getting it, I'd probably go with the white one with two controllers. Now, it says it's out of stock, but you can see here that this can play a lot of different consoles. NES, SNES, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Sega Mega Drive and more. In fact, where's the list? Here we go. NES, SNES, Famicom, Nintendo Super Famicom, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Mega Drive, Genesis, and also play Sega Master Games with an adapter. So there's like a, a little adapter you plug into the top and it allows you to play Master System games. And as far as looks go, I think this is one of the better looking clone consoles. Looks great. Lights up when you've got cartridges, you know, plugged in. Um, quite colorful. You can pl put in original um, controllers as well. That's quite good. You've got, um, what's, I don't know what that one, what's that one in the middle? You've got like a Mega Drive, and then you've got NES at the side. What's maybe, is that, no, oh, is that NES then SNES? Ah, uh, it's NES then SNES. Um, now, my concern here would be this controller. It looks terrible. It looks really terrible. At the end of, I mean, at the end of the day, this is emulating consoles that all had a D-pad, so why the, why the hell is this stupid little thing there? Um... That's one concern, and from the review that I uh, watched on YouTube earlier today, that is one of the criticisms of it. They say that it, it clicks, it doesn't use the correct, you know, it's like a D-pad trying to, uh, something trying to mimic a D-pad, and they say that it's terrible. So, without a good controller, you know, you're not going to enjoy playing your games. Now, you can play your original games, etc., but still... Um, now, this, this this is quite a flexible system as well, though. You know, you can emulate games, you can put in cheat codes, you can all these, do this other thing. Comes with a wireless controller and um, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Um, okay, it uses a micro switch directional pad instead of a traditional directional pad. I saw someone criticise that, uh, criticise them for that, saying that it wasn't as good because of that. But, you know, when you see the reviews of this, this looks good. This looks like a, a really good system. Uh, it's more versatile than the retro... 1HD, and this is the, the official sales page for it. Um, you can see the software here. That you, There's a lot of different options. You can, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's got NES, Famicom. So there's different options for each system. And you can change the refresh rate, screen size, aspect ratio, sounds. And you can even turn on scan lines, 
which wasn't really a big issue in Europe with PAL systems, but was in America with the NTSC. Um, there's a controller, which I think that controller looks terrible. It really does. It just doesn't look comfortable in the hand. Um, yeah, so that would be my main criticism. So if you search on YouTube for Retron 5 review, you will see reviews of it. But if you type in Retro 5 sucks, you will see a lot of negative reviews. And for example, this one from RetroQuest, I watched this earlier, and he talked about the fact that, you know, after a few months, the thing just died, completely died. And when he went back to them about it, they basically said, uh, on fire, someone else that said that, someone else said that theirs died, and then they, they tried to get a, an exchange or get it replaced, and they said, no, you need to pay 50% more to the new one. But this guy said that it died, and there were some other reviews as well that just said that it wasn't playing certain games. They say that there's just a lot of a lot of negative reviews about this. If you can look down here, like, well, I've not looked, watched this one yet, but she looks unhappy. <laughs> um, he's saying they're in deep crap. Beware of the Retron 5, it's the same guy. There does seem to be a lot of people warning about it and what it can't do. So, there is another system out there which seems to be getting better reviews. And it's that one there, which is called the Retro Freak. And if you search for Retro Freak, you'll see lots of reviews, as you would expect in YouTube. Um, for the record, by the way, check out Games 81 Really good YouTuber. Fantastic. He deserves to be subscribed to. Really good reviews, gaming reviews. Um, if you type in Retro Freak Sucks, which is what I did with the Retron, there doesn't seem to be as many... Um, as many, if, if any, I can't really see any negative reviews of the Retro Freak. The reviews for that seem to be mixed to positive, um, whereas Retron, uh, the Retron 5 seems to be getting a lot of negative reviews. So, what is this Netron 5? Well, it's just, a, it's a similar idea to, uh, no, not the Retron 5, the Retro Freak, forgive it, it's proper name. Uh, it's a similar idea to the Retron 5 can play lots of different console games. It's got HD upscaling. It needs, it needs an adapter for the NES, but it does play it. And you can see you've got all the Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Famicom, Super Famicom, SNES, Genesis, Mega Drive, PC Engine, Turbo Graphics, which Turbo Graphics and PC Engine was the same system. And we didn't get it in Europe. Um, PC Engine was Japan and Turbo Graphics was in America, and it was the same 16-bit system. Now, I remember in gaming magazines at the time, they used to actually um, advertise the PC Engine being imported from Japan, so there was a lot of imports of it. Um, so, you can get this in red, but even in red, look at the state of this. This this thing is horrible. This is such a horrible, ugly design. Can you imagine this sitting next to your PS4 or your Xbox One? I mean, even though this thing... You know, the Retron 5's got a lot of negative reviews, but it does look like a modern system. They have actually spent some time on design. And I realise design, it's kind of superficial, it is kind of cosmetic, but look at the state of that. That looks terrible. <laughs> it, really looks, it really looks really bad. Um, no, so that's like a... I don't know, there's a, I think that's the power. There's, I'll sh there's a, an image that shows you what that thing is. Um, there's the, the, the joystick, the controller, and it looks like a really really bad SNES controller, essentially. Looks really bad. Um, so there's the standard version. You've got a USB controller. Doesn't seem to be wireless, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, you've got the console, so that's the standard version. It's a little bit cheaper. The premium version comes with this controller adapter. So with the controller adapter, you can get this device here, which you plug in, and then you can use all your original controllers. But that would mean that, you know, if you're playing a NES game, you've got a, this NES adapter sticking off the top, and then you've got a controller adapter to plug in your NES joystick. But it would have been better if it came with um, wireless controllers, but it does um, support original... Uh, it does support Bluetooth, so what it says here is that you can play it on, with, the, for example, PlayStation DualShock 3 and DualShock 4 controllers. So your PS3 and PS4 controllers will work with this. And that... Is a great selling point for me. I think that's a really good selling point for this system that you should probably hide somewhere so no one can see it. Um, you can see here, advanced emulator. You can actually load the games up, save states, filters, and all that kind of thing. And that's the thing. You know, retro games, 
retro games, one of the biggest downsides to them was that you couldn't save the state. You could play a game such as, say, Mega Man 2, one of my favourite games on the NES, and you could play it for an hour or so, and then, you know, your mum would have called you and says, like, we need to go out, and then you're like, okay, you need to either leave it on all day long, or you need to switch it off, and then when you come back, back to square one. There was a lot, that was a big problem, you know, with NES and SNES games, Mega Drive games, it was, you know, when you switched it off, you, re you hit the reset button, you're back to square one, so save states is a really good thing. Um, and then you can see there, transfer original cartridge to an SD card. I think that's fantastic as well. HDMI, um, HD upscaling. I do love the idea of just ripping cartridges onto the system. You can play emulators as well. Um, there's Turbo Graphics and PC Engine, Super Graphics. So, from the reviews, from what people are saying, the, the Retro Freak looks horrible but it seems to be a more reliable system than the Retron 5. Now, that I'm basing this off of what I've been looking at today. I've watched a few video reviews and a few written reviews, and it does seem to be the case that this Retron Freak is better than the Retron 5. And there was... Um, Hyper kind of released a lot of other consoles. As the name suggests, there was a um, Retron 1, 2, 3, 4... Oh, where's the 4? Don't know where the 4 is. Um, but these ones aren't sold actively anymore, so you might be able to pick these these one up um, pretty cheap. But why would you, you? You know, it makes more sense to get the latest one, in my opinion. Now, there's obviously there's some other ones out there. There's um, as far as what I would like to get, um, this one's coming out apparently soon. I think this or oh, this is another one from Hyperkin. It is capitalizing on the. The, the mini SNES coming out, and it's the Retron SNES HD, is it, or SNES? Aye, SNES Retron HD. Same idea as the Retron 1 HD, um, in that you play original SNES games on it. But again, I do like the idea, and you know, I've already got the original SNES console. What I'm looking for personally is something that plays 10 different consoles, and then I can just play buy retro cartridges and play them from lots of different systems without having a thousand wires lying about the place. I can just, you know, plug and play games from any system from, you know, up to like 95 or something. For me, that's what I think would be amazing. Um, on the subject of gaming handhelds, um, the GPDXD, um, a few of my subscribers have talked about this. It is a very good system, but it is fairly expensive as well. But as a retro gaming, you know, um, solution, it is fantastic. I mean, look at how many systems this thing plays. Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, play, P, PlayStation 1. Blah, 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 blah. Wasn't speaking properly. You can play arcade games with MAME, Game Boy Advance, Mega. It plays everything. So that is a really good option for retro gaming. And uh, you've got lots of tablets, things like that. The retro specs, I believe, is like just a, a clone of the, the Mega. There was a Mega Drive version of this, this kind of design. And then this seems to be playing. Oh, okay, plays Game Boy Advance games. Okay, it's a Game Boy Advance clone. No, I should have played that. Um, what I'd like to do in the future is obviously do more reviews for you guys about these kind of systems. Um, that looks like a cool little thing to have, have around as well, the Sega Mega Drive retro games console. None of these are official, obviously. Now, the Superboy is another one from Hyperkin. Um... This one is the latest version of Superboy S, so it's the second version. There was an original version. And I think this is quite interesting as well, because what it allows you to do is play original games through this little handheld. You plug it into the top, so you can play PAL or NTSC games, I believe. And you can see here, you've got the D-pad, it's the original design. You know, in Europe here, we had um, like blue and yellow, you know, different colours there. You've got the purple in North America. But I, I do like the idea that you can play it on your own and then you can sit it down, plug in some NES ca um, controllers to it, plug it into your television, and then it works as, uh, you know, just like a SNES, basically. Which is, I think it's a, it's a cool idea. Now that's another option. Atari Portable as well. But really, you know, the, for me anyway, I don't want to be buying like a, a Sega handheld, uh, a Nintendo handheld. You know, having one device is something that I think is appealing to all of us. Um, you know, there's one for the Master System, there's one for the Mega Drive. It just makes sense to have everything in the one device. 
So there's there's lots of, you know, there's other companies like this that sell these kind of systems. You can buy a lot of these cloning systems from China as well. Um, not all of them come over to Europe and not all of them go over to North America. And not all of them are good. A lot of them suck ass badly. But I like the idea of, you know, buying one of these consoles in the future just to try them out to see how it works. But it does seem that there is a lot of problems with them at the time being. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this look at some retro gaming consoles, some clone consoles and handhelds that are available just now. There's a lot more available in China, without a doubt. There's thousands of them. They're all copies and imitations and variations of each other. But the ones that come over to Europe and North America tend to be a little bit uh, better quality, or the best ones tend to come over. Um, it's, I do like the idea of owning one of these consoles and placing them down here and then having a mixture of, you know, maybe a little stand with Mega Drive games, NES games, NES games, and just having a small little collection down the side with, and, you know, having wireless controllers and sitting on the couch and playing some of my favourite games of all time does appeal to me. So it's something that I would like to get, but it does seem that none of the systems there are perfect. There's no killer console out there that does everything that you wanted to do. They are... You know, it's kind of a niche product, but there, there are a couple of companies who are trying to work on this. Hyper can seem to be the best one, but they're also a, com a company that does seem to get some criticism for their products, perhaps not as rel reliable as they should be. Um, but I think for me, I, I, I don't know, I'll see how it goes, but I, I do love the idea. Uh, I don't think it's practical to have a SNES, a Mega Drive, a NES, all these different consoles lined up there. It just makes more sense for me to you know, get the one console, I can play, play everything through it. It's the same setup. You can save all your states through the one system. And that really does appeal to me. I'll see how it goes though. Uh, I've not made any, any decisions yet. It's just something I want to keep track on. But thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear from you guys who, well, especially those of you who are into retro gaming, but those of you who actually have some experience on this, please do leave a comment below. Point me in the right direction. Give me your feedback. Tell me what's good and what's not. Uh, I'm a little bit of a novice in this area as far as clone consoles go. Uh, but I do love the idea of playing, you know, games in the, you know, the main setup in the living room. So I might look into it a little bit more. It's not long until the mini SNES comes as well. So I'm sure I'll have to find a home for that somewhere. But if I could get one little console, you know, you're always going to have a modern console in, in your home setup. But if you can get one console that does most of your favourite retro consoles, that would be amazing. So, thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. Please do leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. And until next time, take care.